I have, a, I have a friend who's a conductor, Rob Fisher. He's in New York, and you know, uh, take me to the world of music, Rob. Okay, so he was he was touring a show. It was at the O'Keefe, now the Sony Center. I said, Rob, you know, one of my greatest dreams is always to sit in the pit. I want to sit in the pit. Mm. She says, Fine, okay, someone sit in the pit. So I sat in the pit of the O'Keefe, or now the Sony, and uh, Rob was conducting here, and the musicians said, Oh, and the shows are up there. And I sat there, and I thought, at the end of it, I thought, Okay, there's been three performances going on here. There's the performances that yeah. the singers and the performers are doing for them. There's a performance going on between them, the communication between the performers in the piece as they're doing things and sort of talking to each other beside it. And then there's the performance they're doing for the people in the pit. This, this had been going on for some time. I mean, playing that show. But mm -hmm. I, I hadn't realized, because I have never done, I guess 60 or 70 shows is the most I've ever done of a single play. Okay. I haven't done more than that. Wow. And by the time I get into 50 or 60, I go, I don't know how you, I don't know how you do this. So someone who plays something for three years, how do you keep it going? Well, you've just answered it, so to speak. It's hard. I won't lie about it. It's hard. And it's not the doing of the show, actually, that's the hardest part. I think when the show starts, away you go and you do the show. You know, it's not like I'm standing there going, eh, I don't want to do it. It's, it's, it's more about the, the cumulative injuries, that's what's difficult. Mm -hmm. It becomes all about your body. We're on a rake stage, say for instance. You're on a rake stage for that long, that many times. Who does exactly the same thing? The same motions, the same jumping off the bed, wearing high platform boots, going to bare feet in the next scene, going to high heels in the next one, running around on this rake stage, singing your guts out. So it becomes all about the injuries and the voice, the voice, the voice, the voice. And keeping it going, yes. drawing it out, keeping losing it. Keeping it healthy, keeping it healthy. It doesn't make sense. It's so freaking unnatural to sing that much. It's crazy. One day off a week, all the time. After 50 weeks, holy shit, your voice is going, give me a break. And then you get one week, which is not really enough to get over the whole thing. So and the torn you meniscus in your left knee is not getting any better. You're doing physio, you're working out like crazy to try and stay on top of all this, but your voice is what you worry about. And so you end up not sleeping because you're worried about it. And then you get a cold and your voice is not feeling good. And so you sing on that, maybe you push a little too much because you're tired and you're worried. And then it gets worse and you go see the throat specialist and they give you some stuff and you take that because you got to keep doing the show. That's what it becomes. It's right. more about, it's the panic, the worry that just sits there all the time about your voice. Can my voice get through this again? We have two shows again today. You so know? why do they do that to performers in music theater and they don't do that to opera singers? Opera singers will yeah. not sing two shows a week. Please. They will not sing five shows a week. Please. not. I did Sweeney Todd with the Calgary Opera. I thought I'd died and gone to heaven. You do a show every other day. What? This is heaven. You can give it and not worry. You have to more to, <coughs> oh my God, my God. That's civilized and that makes sense. And that's why they have alternate casts in operas too. I don't know, because it would cost more money to have an alternate cast and because people do it. Because we do it. Eight Why times do you do it? Week. Why we do you do it if it strains it. this? Why do you do it? Because we're stupid. We want to be in a show so badly. You're not stupid. Why do you do it? No, I'm as stupid as anybody else. I just want a job and work. Wait and a minute. Do. You have awards from this side of the horizon to that side of the horizon. <laughs> la la la. So you're worried about work? How does that work? Hey, that's the, that's the best thing about this business, as far as I'm concerned. It will keep you with both feet on the ground because, yeah, don't kid yourself. I've had the last couple of years, or the, not last year, but the year before and the year before, holy, sh nothing. Nothing. I mean, something has to be right. Something has to be there for, thank God I have concerts. I do concerts a lot, and uh, that's good. And why but is that nothing? Is that because you're a woman? Is that because of your age? Is that because of changing fashion? Is that because of 
I'm not going to blame it on anything. I don't know, because there's no show right now that makes any sense. Or if there is, they go with somebody else. Whatever. Whatever. There are many reasons. I say no to stuff, too. I mean, that I figured out a long time ago, too. Sometimes I don't work because I say no to something, because I know I'm going to feel like a total dork in that production, so I'd rather be out of work than be in that show. Is that an easy thing to do, say, no, I don't want to do that? Yeah, easier and easier, you bet. Yeah. I think you know right away. Yeah. You know when something's not going to be great, and you probably shouldn't do it. And if you're going to do it for the money, it better be great money. Then you can say, I'm doing it for the money, fine. Yeah. But, but if it's not that good, then it's not worth doing. Uh, ah. when, when something, if you turn something down and say, no, I really don't want to be, is that because of the creative team in it? Is that because of the subject of the piece? Or? Not the subject, just the, usually you get the, the script, the score, whatever. You can and look at And the story it doesn't think. appeal to you, or the songs don't or appeal to you? Or the script is just not good. The script is not good. Yeah. Are you talking television? If it doesn't look. Sorry, that's a soapbox of mine. Oh, TV is such a small part of my my career really. So what have you turned down? I've turned down things like, you know, um, the Sunset Boulevard being the standby, <laughs> which would have been a good job, but that's not the way I want to be portrayed. You know what I mean? I don't want to be s meeting people saying I'm the standby to the big star. That's not worth it. Is that decision made from your heart or your head? Uh, oh, I think I work pretty well from the heart <coughs> as a rule, but that's a head decision too. Right. I mean, that's a career decision. You know, you can always say, I don't think I should be in that. It just doesn't look good on me. Right. And that's not how I feel. That's not how I see myself. And once you do that, you might get stuck in that rut and be asked to be that again and again. Right. And I, I wouldn't want to do that. There's no way. You wouldn't do, want to do that for career reasons or for yeah. Louise creative reasons? For Louise career reasons. I mean, you know, up to a certain point you can say, I've gotten to this point and I either, you know, at least maintain that and move on, but not go back, not take a few steps back. And that's what that would feel like. You know?